Some of the darkest moments in history are only remembered through the written word, but with the invention of cameras, moments can now be captured in time for future generations to see with their very own eyes. And sometimes these moments are not for the faint of heart. We're going to start off the list with this image here. This is not one of those niche taxidermy pieces. This is indeed a living two-headed dog, pieced together by a mad scientist. Vladimir Demikov was a scientist from the Soviet Union who did some really questionable stuff back in the 50s. He came up with this strange idea of attaching the head of one dog onto another, creating a two-headed dog. Now, why? Well, he wanted to figure out more about organ transplants and see how the body would react to these surgeries. From a pure scientific perspective, what he did was kind of a big deal. It was about pushing the limits of what doctors could do back then. But is it incredibly creepy and unethical? Absolutely. This sparked a huge ethical debate. It seemed like some bizarre freak show rather than an ethical scientific pursuit, and people got pretty upset about it. Playing around with life like that, creating these weird creatures just for the sake of curiosity, it didn't sit well with a lot of folks. And unsurprisingly, the dogs didn't live very long after these experiments. So while Demikov's work was kind of groundbreaking, it was also just downright cruel. You know what's downright cruel to us is if you don't subscribe to this channel. I mean, what are you waiting for? It's free, we got awesome videos coming your way on the daily, so don't miss out. Hit that button down below. Next up, we have this image here of Captain Robert Falcon Scott and his team of explorers after finally reaching the South Pole. It had been a long, grueling, treacherous expedition, and they'd arrived only to find out that a Norwegian team of explorers had beaten them to the punch. Not only were these men now exhausted, starving, and frostbitten, but they wouldn't even be remembered as the team to reach the South Pole first. And now, they had to make the long return trip back to base camp. You can see how miserable and distraught they all look here, not to mention very unwell. It definitely frostbitten. Tragically, the team would never make it home alive. The weather was harsh, they were already suffering from exhaustion, and they were running out of supplies. The first member of the team to pass was Edgar Evans, who died on February 17th of 1912. Then Lawrence Oates willingly walked out into a blizzard, ending his own life. Scott, along with Edward Wilson, Henry Bowers, and Edgar Evans kept going, but things got worse. The storm ended up trapping them in their tent for nine whole days, and they couldn't move. They died in the tent, just 11 miles away from where they could get more supplies. This is a photograph taken in 1986 of what were known as the Chernobyl liquidators. Uh, see those white stripes, uh, the patterns at the bottom of this photo? That was caused by radiation on the film. The Chernobyl liquidators were a group of people who were called in to clean up the mess after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986. Their job was to try and make things safer for dealing with the radioactive contamination. These were regular folks, soldiers, firefighters, and other workers who faced really dangerous conditions to help control the aftermath. These workers had to deal with high levels of radiation, and many of them got sick later on due to exposure. They didn't have fancy gear like we might see today. In fact, there wasn't even enough protective equipment for everyone, so some of them had to construct their own out of leather and lead plates. It was an incredibly tough and risky job, and they faced severe health consequences because of it. Some, of course, even died because of the exposure. All right, this is a pretty famous photograph in the world of paranormal photography, and for good reason. This picture has a pretty chilling tale behind it. It's a very classic kind of ghost story. Back in 1924, during a routine voyage, tragedy struck the SS Watertown when two crew members, James Courtney and Michael Meehan, lost their lives and were buried at sea. Two men had been sent to the ship's interior cofferdam to clean and do repairs. But they were unaware there was poisonous gas leaking into the area they were working in, and they died inhaling the fumes. What followed was this series of events that would go down in maritime history as one of the eeriest tales ever told by seafarers. After the burial, the remaining crew reported an unsettling sight. They claimed to see ghostly faces appearing in the water alongside the ship, and the faces looked just like Courtney and Mihan. One crew member managed to snap the famous photo that is now 
infamous, seemingly revealing their ghostly faces in the water. All right, want to see part of the underground hideout of a Russian doomsday cult? Well, you're looking at it. This is one of those images uh, you can kind of smell just by looking at. Never a good thing. Pitor Kuznetsov led a strange group called the True Russian Orthodox Church. And in 2007, he convinced his followers to barricade themselves inside a cave. Kuznetsov wasn't with them because police had him in custody. He claimed to be a prophet, combining Christian teachings with visions of the world ending. So why did they hide in a cave? Well, they genuinely thought the world was about to end, and by shutting themselves away, they believed they could shield themselves from the apocalypse. The police found out where the cave was, but the people inside threatened to harm themselves. The police tried to step in, and after a few months, yes, months, spent in that cave, the Russian security forces finally stepped in. Two members had actually already died in the cave and were creating dangerous fumes for the folks that were still alive. Awful. Eventually, though, they were hauled out of there. Does this look like a place you'd want to spend the night in? Probably not. It's run down, clearly abandoned. It'd probably be squatters, and there's no furniture. But even worse than all of that, this is said to be one of the most haunted places in Italy. In the quiet village of Kona stands an abandoned house known as Villa Magnoni, left vacant and untouched now for many years. Its windows, aside from one, are completely sealed up. Back in the late 80s, a group of curious young men decided to venture into this abandoned mansion. They actually managed to break in, but once inside, they heard something. It was the distant sound of children singing. At least that's what it sounded like. And it was seemingly coming from the garden. They went outside to investigate, but when they got there, it was completely empty. As they were looking around, an old woman suddenly appeared in the window above them in the house. She scolded and insulted them, demanding they leave the premises immediately. The teenagers did the smart thing and hastily booked it out of there. But just after they'd hopped into their car and began peeling off, they got into an accident. Three of them ended up losing their lives in the crash leaving only one survivor. In the aftermath, the villagers took the precautions and sealed off all the windows of Villa Magnoni, believing someone or something dark was lingering inside the property. Weeks later, they discovered that the covering on one specific window, the very one where the old woman had appeared to scold and curse the boys, was mysteriously uncovered. This is one of the last photos taken of the Apollo 1 crew. On the day a deadly fire erupted during a pre-launch test, all three astronauts lost their lives. On January 27th of 1967, during a pre-launch test for the Apollo program, the crew of Apollo 1, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger B. Chaffee were conducting a test at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The spacecraft was mounted on its launch vehicle. The purpose of the test was to check the spacecraft's systems and conditions simulating a launch with external power sources disconnected. During the test though, the crew encountered an issue. A fire broke out in the pure oxygen environment of the command module's cabin. The fire spread incredibly fast because of the highly flammable materials that were used at the time to construct the spacecraft. This is one of the last known photographs taken of a man named Michael Rockefeller, the son of New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who never returned home from an expedition to Dutch New Guinea, now part of Indonesia in 1961. Michael was on a mission to study the Asmat people, an indigenous tribe known for their unique art and customs. And while on an art collecting expedition along the coast, Michael's boat capsized. He and a fellow explorer, Rene Wassing, tried to swim to the shore, which was about 12 miles away, but Wassing eventually became too exhausted Michael decided he was going to continue swimming alone, hoping to reach help. But Michael would never be seen again. Now, the famous theory is that the very tribe seen with him in this photograph ate him. Now, although cannibalism was still a bit of a thing in some areas of Asmat at the time, there's not a whole lot of evidence for that. It just makes for a sensational kind of story. There's another possibility that he was attacked by sharks or just succumbed to exhaustion. This is a photograph taken inside Waverly Hills Sanitarium 
in Kentucky, a hospital that became famous for treating patients suffering from tuberculosis. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people died there. It opened in 1910 to treat people with the deadly lung disease. Back then, there wasn't a cure for tuberculosis, so the sanitarium focused on providing fresh air and sunlight, thinking it might help patients get better. As the years went by, better treatments for tuberculosis came along, and the need for places like Waverly Hills decreased. The sanitarium eventually closed in 1961. After that, it went through various uses. It was an old folks' home for a short time. Nothing really stuck, though. Uh, now, what makes Waverly Hills famous, or maybe infamous, is its reputation for being very haunted. Over the years, people started to tell stories about strange things happening there. Glowing orbs, the sounds of disembodied coughs, footsteps making their way down the empty halls. One of the most famous stories is about a ghostly figure named Timmy. According to the tale, Timmy was a little boy who stayed at Waverly Hills and died there. People claimed to have heard a child's laughter and seen a shadowy figure resembling a young boy. Because of all these stories, Waverly Hills has become pretty popular for ghost hunters. There have even been TV shows and documentaries filmed there. And finally, we have Mayenga Nasaka. Mayenga Nasaka was a nurse in Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, during a scary time in 1976, the Ebola outbreak. This photo captures one of the last moments of her life. Mayenga got infected with the Ebola virus while she was working at Mambalad Hospital in Kinshasa. She was caring for a nun who had been brought in from Yambuku Mission Hospital where the outbreak started. The thing is, Mayenga's case became kind of famous because she was one of the first healthcare workers to get sick during the outbreak. In the picture, you can see her standing next to another nurse taking care of a patient, but here's the heartbreaking part. Just a few days after this photo was taken, Mayenga passed away. Hospital staff didn't have the right gear to protect themselves, and there weren't enough precautions to stop them from coming into contact with patients' blood or fluids. This was the very early stages of the outbreak, and people didn't know how dangerous the virus really was at the time. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.